mediocrity. <laughs> but, um, and then there's another side, a kind of mirror side in a way, um, to the same topology. That money grows from our labors in the most beautiful way. And that money itself is predicated upon the value of our flesh and blood and our labor, our birth, and the labors of our birth in a way that brings about, in a way that we should expect to bring about more suffering. That our labor is used to stand for and to capitalize, to give itself, sort of in all capital letters, to, to give itself to be defined and to be to put to uses which are deemed suitable for it as a resource for a supernatural being. Which is to say, by definition, a culture or a language or force or authority or a world which is over or meant to supplant, perhaps all for understandable reasons or good reasons or imperative reasons, economically, biologically, sexually, whatever, its own nature, whatever that may be. And we could say, we might expect to see this, we might expect to see that, we might expect to see everything to do with abnormal psychology, we might expect to see all the crime and addiction in the world, we might expect to see by the same reason the crime of addiction that we see people are quite capable for in, in extraordinary ways to giving the world what it needs and, and having a lot left over and whatever hides in it, whatever personifications of poverty poverty may live in these family trees that are more explicit or visible in others because think of the visible poverty around you as the tip of the iceberg if poverty itself included personif other personifications of poverty, other ways that its dramatic persona, its masks, its roles, its actors, its industrial demands, its lengths to which we, you, he, they, she, be, it goes, or has to, and note that any of that is wrong, or any of that is bad, or any of that is evil, but that the reasons why, and the fears, qualms, pressures, and losses and things to be regained, the paradise regained sort of story and by what forces and when and in one sequence and in what way have you succumbed and which way have you thrived based on different powerful and industrial and social and cultural mental fields that sustain the stories of history, the demands of history and the increasingly taxing languages which have survived history where other more natural languages have not. Which is why it is difficult to claim basic mental health, much less any um, restoration of our own nature, because nothing about mental health in God's world is ever about reclaiming our nature, right? But it's actually kind of limited in a super glass nature ceiling kind of way to what Immanuel Kant would see, say as the potential of maybe one day being someone whose nature is worth anything at all. That is a human being <laughs> and the very fact that you attribute such and such value to the nature of humans and human nature Immanuel Kant attributes little to none <laughs> for you have not yet descended to a nature worth having any of the nature you attribute to that name and God's celestial casino of names and things and what we attribute to them and what they mean and what that means is now fast begun now, if you see this casino happening, you might feel like you're waking up from a drug stupor, like something that might happen if you spent too much time with Bill Cosby. <laughs> oh, like, oh, what? Good comes from jobs of suffering and money that you work and suffer because your birth was a debt that could only be paid with the flesh and blood that came from it. <laughs> and the flesh and blood... You know, human flesh and blood, when it's born, it's born damned. It's born, which means indebted. The soul is indebted. The soul is damned. And the soul is the capitalization of the flesh. And the mind that arises, like a virtual mind, 
in place of the mind that that world can permit, like a pneuma, like a breath, right, is now replaced and represented by the soul mind, which is now going to struggle and find and fit or rebel its way into being under command of the giant tax man in the sky, who's the powerful magic over the hoodoo of all the voodoo that you do do so well. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, I have to, I have to work something funny at some point. It's just so fucking serious. I'm like, could people like sitting around getting stoned really enjoy this? <laughs> like, man, like, we should pause this dude. It's like, no, I don't have the will to pause it anymore. Like, Why are we listening to this? I don't know. John, are you listening? Yeah, man, I understand this person. He's like, I'm like tuning into him telepathically. We are like the same person having the same thoughts in nature. Like, Gary Zukov is there, and all kinds of cool people. I don't really know if that's a cool person. <laughs> anyway, the guy who wrote Ivanhoe, and maybe Thoreau is like, uh, Heisenberg, and they, they had a principal named after him. It's like, I bet you his mom is happy. They're not going to have, like, a Landon principal. If there's a Landon principal, it's going to be about someone slowly cutting off their own dick. One giant waste of breath after another. <laughs> Imagine a really awful YouTube critic. It's like, damn it. You stole the wind beneath my wings. You stole the thunder from underneath my hooves. Toilet paper. Whose toilet paper? Using it improves. <sighs> okay, so we've proven that I'm not good for pot. Maybe I am. I'm listening to you, man. I'm listening to you. It's night, man. You haven't stopped talking for three fucking hours. <sighs> but no, I'm not really bothering anyone. Yes, you are. You could turn off the video. I don't want to. I'm addicted to listening to you. I, too, believe that at some point, this is all going to mean something. <laughs> it's like life. You're absolutely right. Walking with you is like life. You're not sure, you're confused, you start to be a bit, you know, disturbed. You think you know where you're going, you thought you did, but you hope it all turns out okay. <laughs> but if you're like life, your channel's like life. I feel like a salmon. I don't even know if I'm moving upstream anymore, man. I don't know, I don't want to write a comment or anything, but I just want you to know, like, I don't know if I'm the salmon or the bear. You talk about the eagle and visions and following the law, and I want to do all those things, man, but I got to tell you, I've been listening for four hours. I don't understand a single fucking word you've been saying. <laughs> it's all my fault. I know. I'm not smart enough, man. It's not you. You're not just a gibbering maniac. It's me. It's me. I'm the problem. <laughs> it's me. Look, it's okay. It's okay, you know. I'm a decent man. You can tell me I'm the problem. I can be the problem. Can you? Yeah. I can. All right, let me have the problem. Or I can't handle a problem anymore. Your problems, my problems, I, that's all right. I'll take them away for you. You take my problems, you, I, hey man, that's what I'm here for. You know, there. All right, I feel better. It's me, it's all your fault. Yeah, I'm bastard. I'm just just a mealy mouth, uh, mucus making, um, government teeth sucking, and biting down on a hard orphan bastard. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That would mean that I'm not any of those things. That's right. I would be all those things. You'd be none of them. And you get to feel good after. Don't I have to do something? Yeah, you should probably like wish me dead, lynch me, or put me on a crucifix. <laughs> or just slander me. Like go up to someone and be like, that dude's a motherfucking child fucker. <laughs> Don't listen to him. Like, oh man, <laughs> you should have to say child fucker. Like, well, technically you're putting words in my mouth. I didn't say child fucker. I didn't say anything. You put words in my mouth. <laughs> you put words in your critic's mouth. You put other words and you put your words in your critic's mouth. <laughs> you don't put these words. These words don't make them feel good. <laughs> it makes them feel like they're douchebags and you're the one who's actually the genius and they're just full of inferiority complexes like parasites crawling on their skin and the only thing they can do is scream, scream, scream. Or they can criticize me. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier. <laughs> what, ants? 
honey all over their skin. They're waking up. It's not a dream. Why are the ants all over you? The things I would never think about if I didn't watch movies. I think I've seen every possible kind of torture. And that's without having to watch um, Game of Thrones. Which is a tour de force of every suggestion of human torture possible within any televised hour. Which, and, and on which basis I choose not to watch it. <laughs> because I have standards, people. Standards. You remember what those were? I like to make things sound. Actually, I just like Jason Bourne. You know, I don't want to get... I don't really have to criticize. When I criticize if I don't have to, it's just I don't want to get into it. It's not my thing. I'm finding it just... I respect that, you know, like, when you're young, you have a lot of time to put into different things, you know, like, I can't do video games because I don't have the time, I don't feel, you know, I feel like I was too old before my time because it's like the time you have is how young you are because you have a lot of time for stuff. If you have time, you know, to, to, to do stuff that you like, that's an amazing thing, you know. And that's not just about youth. Like, you look to preserve that, right? I don't have the time for video games. I don't have the time. I don't have the brain function. I don't have uh, the energy that I have to give up if I play them at morning or night because I feel like they drain the fuck out of me. <laughs> and I know, like, they've been there for me sometimes, but how many hours have I been going here? Three hours. This has got to be a record. I should be Jerry Lewis. This could be a telethon. You know, send money now, or this man will never stop talking. Anyway, that, on that note, perhaps I should. I pressed the button. Press the button, Landon, the stop button. You can do it. It's an intervention. Press it. Press it and begin the healing. Or your family will never talk to you again. But my family doesn't talk to me. Okay, well, wrong threat. Your mother will stop buying you things at the supermarket. No. Wait, we haven't done this yet. This is what I'm trying to be a good director. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. <laughs> I gotta do this. I love TV in the 80s. Dun dun dun. Hey, Deno. That woman I brought in? Yeah? She's a man. Hey, stop the music, Dano. What is it? I think that our cameraman is on crack. <laughs> the script says 13 close ups in a row with a narration by a Captain Kirk impersonator. Look, I need this giant TV screen. Bones, come here, Spock. I think I've got it. It shows giant alien beings. Hello, we know you've been looking for where no man has gone before. But the undiscovered country, ironically in American history, had already been inhabited for about 300 years. <laughs> Eat gad. I'm a doctor, not a historian, but I think that's complete bullshit. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs>